and welcome to the show. I'm Tosh Taylor. And I'm Jenna Morton, and we are excited to have a repeat guest coming to join us this week, someone that we always love talking to. We have Andrew LeBlanc, who is the Executive Director of Atlantic Wellness with us. Welcome back to the show, Andrew. Well, thank you so much for having me. Of course. It is always a pleasure to talk with you, although uh, we did realize that the last time we had you on the show, we were all dressed up for Halloween. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a pleasure to see you here in the studio, not as uh, Waldo. I, I went a little <laughs> more professional this time. It's, uh, yeah. So part of the reason that we've invited you onto the show this week is to talk about the campaign that Atlantic Wellness is running right now. So can you maybe just remind people briefly what it is you do as an organization and then jump into what it is you're trying to accomplish right now? Sure, yeah. Well, thanks again for having me on. So uh, Atlantic Wellness is a registered charity. We provide free counseling for youth ages 12 to 21. Um, we have a number of different mental health services that our team provides, so one-on-one -on -one counseling is the primary. Uh, we have a same-day clinic that uh, makes sure that young people get access really quick to counseling. We do group supports, we do a lot of education in the community, uh, parent supports as well, and so there's lots of different things that we do. Uh, we're able to provide those services because the community supports us. Uh, we rely on um, local businesses to, to donate and individuals in the community to, to support the organization. Uh, and so that's why we've created the Wave of Change campaign. Uh, it launched back on August 17th, um, was the public portion of the campaign. And so we're looking to raise three and a half million dollars to go to the organization. Uh, we've already raised 2.2 million. Uh, oh my so goodness. We're, <laughs> yeah. That's a huge number. It's Congratulations. Been going pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> Uh, and it's because we have such a strong community that really steps up to, uh, to support organizations like ours. And that's how we're able to continue to provide free counseling to, to youth in need. And so uh, the campaign's going to cover a, a couple of things. Uh, first and foremost, it's going to cover operating costs for the organization, or, or, or most of it, for five years. We're also looking to hire two francophone therapists at the organization. So right now, we're predominantly anglophone in the service delivery that we have. And so we're looking to obviously expand. Um, you can't be that successful in Greater Moncton if you're not a bilingual organization. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, uh, it, you know, it's important for us to make sure that the reach of the organization is as far as it can be. So we wanted to make sure that uh, you know, young people, regardless of, of your, your first language, uh, are able to access the mental health support that they need, because everybody's struggling. Uh, the next thing we're looking at is uh, getting a new building. So we've been an organization for 10 years now, uh, and we've outgrown our building twice. So wow. we started off in Riverview, now we're on Luke Street. Uh, and in order to, to address the demand in the community, we keep growing. And so we're looking to find uh, another space now. Um, and this, this is going to be it. I'm going to call it and say this will be <laughs> the last time we move. And <laughs> so we need something big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, a portion of the funds, about half a million dollars, are going to go towards renovating a new location. And so we're on the hunt to, uh, to try and find a, a new spot that'll, that'll fit the bill. Okay. Now, you said, like, you're, you're outgrowing your space. Do you have any idea uh, what the numbers are for how many children are using your space every year? Yeah. So, we average between 350 uh, and 400 youth uh, a year that we're able to provide services to. In 2021, we provided 4,100 hours of clinical support. So, that would include counseling or the group counseling that we offer all of the clinical services. So uh, we, have, we have a big reach with the organization. And um, one of the nice things about Atlantic Wellness is that you know even over the pandemic, we were able to add telehealth services uh, and continue to d diversify the services that we offer. So we didn't slow down uh, as when COVID-19 hit. Um, we're a little tired now and we're kind of <laughs> slowing down. But, um, but uh, yeah, we were able to, to adapt really quickly and make sure that um, young people still had access to those services and part of our expansion I involves keeping all of that so you know i, I don't want to say the pandemic is behind us <laughs> but it seems to not be as prevalent as it was uh, but we're keeping all the telehealth so young people still have the ability to get counseling in person uh, via video text or phone i uh, think that's so important for youth now to have that access you yeah. know, it doesn't matter what kind of pandemic situation we might be in. We have a lot of people who live in rural areas mm -hmm. or, you know, if you're struggling to have support at home, being able to access your support without having to physically come to the building can make a huge difference for people. 
Absolutely, and I think that's one of the, the main goals of Atlantic Wellness is to try and eliminate as many barriers as possible. It's why every service we offer is free because we don't want any financial barriers. Uh, maintaining the telehealth piece uh, and uh, we have an outreach therapist as well, um, which I should talk about that in, in a second too. Um, it allows us to work on that transportation barrier, right? So for young people who can't get to us. But there's other things too, you know, if you're a young person who really struggles with social anxiety, it might even be triggering for you to have to go out into a building to see your therapist in person. Uh, and so the telehealth piece really helps for, for those young people who are, are, are in need of support, but maybe have some anxiety about that. Um, so the other piece, uh, I mentioned our outreach therapist. We piloted this position last year, and so what this particular therapist is doing is going out into other communities where the young people can't get to us. So for example, um, they're at Tantramar High School one morning uh, a week to provide services there. Uh, last year we were at Moncton High, Louisville Middle. Uh, we're also at YouthQuest in an afternoon, so they're physically going out into the community to reach the young people that, that can't get to us as well. And that, that pilot worked really well, and so we're going to keep that, and the campaign's going to allow us to uh, maintain that position and uh, we also expanded our clinic last year so uh, as a pilot and so we're going to keep that as well. One thing that I've always liked is you guys are very clear on your website if you make a donation exactly how that that factors into you know how many hours of care kind of thing mm -hmm. because it is sometimes daunting I think for people when they hear oh this organization needs help they need support mm -hmm. you think that you need to have hundreds or thousands of dollars but you know, people say the words, every dollar counts, but can you give us an idea of just how, how small a donation someone could make individually that would have a huge impact? Sure, so one hour of therapy is the equivalent of a $98 donation. Um, so a half hour of therapy is 49 if I'm doing my mental math correctly, <laughs> which I may not be. Uh, but every, every, it's true, the, you know, that phrase gets said a lot, every dollar counts, but it really does. It doesn't take much to provide uh, support to, to a young person. We have monthly donors that uh, do $30 a month. Uh, we have some that do $20 a month, uh, but it all adds up uh, and every little, bit, every little bit helps. So if we're looking to provide 4,100 plus hours of, of clinical support, I'm not going to attempt to do the math on what that is, but oh man, but that, was adds, that was impressive. It, <laughs> yeah, Can you imagine I'm just pulling out. That no would way. Be remarkable. Yeah. yeah, I have spreadsheets that do that for me. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it adds up really quickly. And when you have a community like Greater Moncton where people do step up and they make contributions, the $10 contributions, the $20 donations, uh, married with you know some of those bigger corporate gifts and, and larger personal ones, it adds up really fast. That's how we've gotten to 2.2 million so far. We were very fortunate to have uh, IQ Commercial Mortgage Strategy step up as our matching donor. Uh, and so they will be, uh, or they, they did match uh, up until September 16th, uh, all of the, the dona donations that came in up to $100,000. And so, wow. you know, our, our community steps up in a really big way and it, it really goes the extra mile. So, yeah, it's great. Well, I think that our community uh, over the 10 years that you guys have been doing this, they very quickly have seen what you're doing for our community. The fact that you have an outreach counselor that is going to these schools that, uh, you know, like you said, it's Moncton High, but it's not in the city. <laughs> so, you know, they're going out there. And I like that because some kids that might not feel comfortable speaking to someone could see their friends going and speaking to someone and realizing, okay, this is okay. Mm -hmm. I do, I know I need to talk to somebody. Like you said, everybody's struggling. So it's a really great that people have the ability to A, be at home and talk to someone that way. Or at school, they can just pop in and see somebody too. I just to me, it just blows my mind. I, something I wish we had when we were in school, that's for sure. I think that's one of the things we hear most often mm -hmm. from people when we're looking for support is, oh, I wish this existed when I was younger. Uh, and it's, you know, it, it's true. It's, it's a really important service to have. And as you said, we can help normalize this conversation by talking about it in the community, by sending our therapists out into the community. People are seeing that it's okay to ask for help. Um, the catch-22 on that is that the more education we do and the more awareness we create, the more the demand increases and hence the need for the Wave of Change campaign so that we can continue to adapt and expand our services uh, in the best way possible. Let's talk for a minute about some of those ways that people can step up and help. You know, how do people donate to the Wave of Change campaign? I probably should have led with that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> we'll sprinkle it through. Yeah. The, Getting the, middle end. Right. Don't worry. We'll leave clues throughout to yeah. the website, yeah. and then you can piece them together. Yeah. Uh, the best way to donate is online at www.atlanticwellness.org. Um, where we have, uh, you'll get an automatic charitable receipt through the, the online platform. Uh, if you want to give us a call at 382-0298, uh, we can also arrange uh, in person as well. And if you'd like to do a check or e-transfer or anything like that, we'll take your money any way you want <laughs> to donate it uh, <laughs> to the organization. So we actually have, uh, last week we had a, a young kid who came in uh, who's been saving recyclables and they've uh, they, it worked out to about a thousand dollar donation to the organization oh. yeah wow so everybody can get involved and everybody's uh, you know making a really meaningful contribution to, to supporting young people who need mental health support and you guys also do every now and then some fundraising in the community as well we do and I feel like maybe you've got something coming up yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> we didn't dress for the occasion on no. this one, I guess, right? No. But uh, yeah, our, our annual Monster Trot fundraiser is uh, back once again. It's going to be on October 29th uh, at the, the Moncton Coliseum. And so we're really excited to have that event running again, but to not have any COVID restrictions around it is, is also great. Mm -hmm. uh, we usually get between eight to 900 kids and their families that come through our, our doors for Monster Trots. So for anyone who doesn't know, it's a Halloween fundraiser where you can go trick-or-treating uh, around a bunch of booths that have been sponsored by local businesses. Uh, it's only $10 to get in and uh, all of the proceeds go to support youth mental health. And so we've, we've got a number of really great partners um, that have uh, stepped up to, to support that event as well. And all of our staff dress up and um, it's great just to see the kids coming out and, and enjoying the event. And, yeah, it's a good fundraiser for us. What if you wanted to be one of the booths handing out candy? How do they participate? Uh, yeah, if you are interested in supporting one of the booths, you can just email me at it, andrew at atlanticwellness.org or give us a shout at 382-0298 uh, and we will uh, we'll set that up for you. So the neat thing is that businesses, if they want to, they can decorate their own booth. Uh, we also have some stuff and we can decorate it for them and so uh, it's great promotion for the business, great opportunity to give back. We'll provide all the candy for you so that oh you can wow. hand it out. Okay. Um, and then businesses get the opportunity if they, if they want to send staff to go and uh, hand out candy to the kids and their families as they, as they come around. So it's a great opportunity just to connect with the community and um, see how the kids dressed up and it's, it's pretty cute. It is. It's always one of the most fun, like uplifting oh, my moments. Kids love it. Yeah. yeah. Love and it. just there is there's so so many people that you get to see as you go through all those booths and see just how much the community understands what Atlantic Wellness means yeah. to have this here is just it gives me goosebumps every time we talk about Atlantic Wellness because the fact that there is free mental health mm -hmm. support for youth in our community like you say no barriers you guys have done everything I think humanly possible to make this accessible to everyone and we're just the luckiest people that it exists here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you feel okay. that way? Like, I'll, I'll get right. on myself. <laughs> 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 I, I will say we are incredibly fortunate to live in the community that we're in. We couldn't keep our doors open without the support of the general public, without the local business community, uh, and some of the foundations that give us funding. And we, we, we certainly feel blessed to be a, a part of Greater Moncton because we have a very giving community that's willing to, to step up. And you know, you had mentioned like there's no cost on on our services. The neat thing about that is because there's no cost, there's also no cap on sessions. So if you're accessing counseling through, uh, you know, your private insurance or something like that, your insurance is probably going to run out after four mm -hmm. or five sessions, mm -hmm. maybe less, depending on uh, where the prices are for counseling, because you know those are changing too. Uh, but with us, there's no cap. So theoretically, you could start at age 12 and go all the way to age 21. Uh, and, and access services with Atlantic Wellness. That doesn't happen very often. The average is about 11 sessions per client, but um, you do have that option for the continuity of care, and it's, uh, it's, it's a great service to know that you're not rushed to try and get all your problems solved before your four sessions mm -hmm. runs out, right? There's no pressure with that, so. That's fantastic, yeah. just to think of it that way, too. Like you say, yeah, if you're doing it through your insurance, like anything, yeah, you're only gonna get a few sessions before you're paying completely out of pocket. And to think that you say, yeah, it usually takes about 11 sessions for someone to feel that they've mm. got the support they need. I don't know any insurance policy out there that's paying for 11 sessions of anything. <laughs> if they cover anything <laughs> at all. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about the, uh, the actual campaign and putting it together because you um, 
I don't know. One thing that you guys do that I love is you always use kids who've been through your programs or used your services with uh, the Waves of Change campaign when you were putting that all together and creating the video and stuff. How did it feel to be there and be a part of that? To be a part of putting the video together? Yeah. Well, first of all, it was the most professional operation I've ever, like, <laughs> it wasn't me with my iPhone yeah, trying right? to record anything. <laughs> so that was unreal just to be a, to, to witness the process come together. So that was pretty cool. Uh, you're right that we do, uh, for the most part, not mm -hmm. always, but for the most part, we try and use uh, young people who have expressed an interest in advocating for, for mental health in the community, that want to use their experience to try and inspire other youth, to try and showcase that it is okay to ask for support. Uh, for example, Sierra Carleton uh, is our youth advocate for Atlantic Wellness, and she spoke at the launch. Uh, that, that video is still on our Facebook page if anybody wants to check it out. Um, and she has uh, a really powerful story, and she's been so willing to share that to, to, to inspire others. And we've had a number of other youth that, uh, that, to do that. So aside from just being wowed by the professional production of it all, no matter what the setting is, it's really inspiring to hear young people willing to share their experience and, and to talk about how Atlantic Wellness has impacted their lives. Uh, you know, in Sierra's story, she talks about how she, she got to a point that she didn't want to live anymore uh, and finally got connected with Atlantic Wellness with uh, our clinical supervisor, Danielle Whalen, uh, and, and completely turned things around. And now she's doing a lot of public speaking for us. And she's, uh, she's a former client now. She's, she's now aged out of our services. But um, yeah, she does some great work to try and get out into the community and use her experience to really support others and encourage others. <laughs> Is there any struggles that you guys find, like when anything that you feel like you, you um, kind of get backed up against when you're trying to get your information out there to people? Is there anything Jenna and I can do to tell them? <laughs> <laughs> I think getting the word out there is always an issue. Uh, there's still people who don't know what the organization does. Um, so that's something that we're always trying to, to grow is making sure that young people know that there is support out there. Um, and sometimes, sometimes it's not even knowing that Atlantic Wellness is there. Sometimes it's just having a positive adult in your life that can listen uh, and, and be that supportive person. And I think as adults, sometimes we feel that pressure that we have to have the answers for young people if they come. Like if your, your child comes and I'm really struggling with this and you don't have to have the answer. Sometimes you just need to listen and validate. And that's what's really important. Uh, but yeah, getting the, getting the word out that the services exist, uh, both to clients and to donors, uh, <laughs> is really important. That's, I, I think anybody in the nonprofit sector is going to say that, right? The, the challenge is getting out to funders uh, and, and getting the message out about the impact that the organization has. And so that's certainly uh, for a small nonprofit too, right? Like we are limited in the capacity and resources that we have. So anytime anyone shares what we're doing, <laughs> it's greatly appreciated. <laughs> yeah. Um, you touched on this earlier, but just to, to drive home the point to people, one of the, the free services that you offer is a, a drop-in service. Uh, you know, you guys open up a same the same-day clinic. Yeah. Same-day clinic, that's what you call it, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the same-day clinic and how people access that? Because I think that's a really important piece mm -hmm. that people who even know about the center maybe don't realize that sure. that's something that's offered. So this is a really important service, actually, and it's something that I think even at a provincial government level, we're starting to recognize that brief counseling uh, and, and more immediate access to services, how crucial that really is. So we started our clinic back in 2018, uh, and it works just like an after-hours medical clinic. So on Mondays, the phone lines open at 8.30. You can call in and book an appointment with a therapist for that night. If that day fills up, then we'll just schedule you on uh, Thursday or whenever else they have an appointment for that week. So you're getting that really uh, immediate access to a therapist. You're not waiting for months on end to get in to see someone. Um, so when you come in, uh, our, all of our intake process goes through the clinic. Uh, so you call in, book your appointment, see your therapist that night. You can access the clinic three times within three months. Um, and then at the end of three months, ideally you're already uh, in with a long-term therapist. But if you're not, uh, you can just start the three months over again um, 
which as I said it aloud is kind of ridiculous. We might as well just say you can <laughs> access it once a month. <laughs> but in terms of how you deal with the people, you, within those three months, you generally yeah. are able to get them in a situation where they don't need it, so, the phone in. Yeah, so you can, you can go on the long-term list. When you come into the mm -hmm. clinic, the therapist will put you on, on the wait list if you want. Uh, and it could take a couple of months to be assigned a permanent therapist, but the nice thing about the clinic is that you can still access while you're on the wait list. So at no time when you're trying to get support from Atlantic Wellness are you without access to a therapist, which is nice because you're not waiting alone uh, on a wait list somewhere mm -hmm. for six months up to a year to try and get services with only like a check-in phone call like, hey, we're going to get to you when we get to yeah. you, sorry you have that access through the clinic. Uh, and we're seeing a shift, I think, in services that it's recognizing that kind of a model is more important. Atlantic Wellness, for example, was recognized in uh, one of the more recent Child and Youth Advocate Office's uh, reports uh, on mental health. We were cited, I think, eight times in that report as being an effective model to, to use. And so that was really humbling for us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, it's nice and, and validating to, to let us know that we're on the right track. So. Um, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, it's something that we're all starting to recognize that this more immediate access to services is really important. I'm not sure I want to know the answer to this question, but um, with your potential opening of a bigger space, could you start seeing younger children? Are you guys noticing that there's a need for younger children to have access to therapists? Oh, we get that request all the time all the time uh, and it's it's one of the one of the questions I probably get more frequently when I'm speaking in public is mm -hmm. are we going to have that at this time it's not a part of the five-year plan um, the expansion we're looking at right now is just to keep up with the age range that we're, we're working with right now but you know down the road it is something that we've talked about mm -hmm. uh, we just don't have any specific plans on it right now but the nice thing about community mental health too is that we can collaborate with other practitioners uh, and so when, when people do call, it, it can be hard to get services for that age, but mm -hmm. there's a few people that we can, we'll try and refer them to and we can support with some service navigation that way. It's just so hard with kids growing up so fast these days. You, do, <laughs> you know, like when I was seven, eight, nine, ten, Barbies, man. <laughs> now it's <laughs> YouTube and TikTok and, and anyway. bullying and stress. Yeah. And, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of services there's that could be <laughs> useful to <laughs> children under 12. Mother of three children under 12. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what's, what's left? Uh, so let's go back specifically to, you know, the, the bigger kind of corporate donation side of things or the bigger personal requests for Wave of Change. You still have just shy of a million dollars that mm -hmm. you're looking for before the end of the year, sooner if possible. Yeah. So what, what, what do people need to know if they, if they have you know, a business that they own or they you know, want to go to their employer and say, hey, there's this really great cause. How do, how do that, that side of things work? Is it just call you up? Yeah, I think the best thing is just to reach out to the center and ask for uh, myself or, or Julie Asseron, our director of development, and, uh, and we'll set up a meeting and we'll, we'll walk through everything. We have a, a case statement that's been put together. I can provide you with all the impact data and run through all the numbers and, and talk about how your, your contribution uh, can really help. But we've had some amazing donors step up. Uh, JDI has, has, has stepped up to be a, a, a contributor so far. Um, and we've had a, a number of other donors that, uh, that are really um, continuously in our corner, uh, coming back for the campaign. Uh, and then we've had a number of new donors as well. We mentioned IQ Commercial, and I won't continue because there's yeah, uh, probably <laughs> 25 no. or 30 yeah. businesses that uh, <laughs> have support. But um, yeah, we'll be doing, uh, over the, the October and November, we're going to be really focusing on our donor recognition. So it's a great opportunity to showcase all those great businesses that have uh, contributed. So if you are a business looking to, to donate, um, uh, get in touch with us soon because we're looking to do a, a really big donor recognition piece uh, in October and November. Okay, Excellent. and one last time, remind everyone the best ways to to find you and to get in touch with you for either services, donations, any of it. Where do people find Atlantic Wellness? Sure, best two ways: AtlanticWellness.org uh, or three eight two zero two nine eight. Perfect. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you. We'll be back again next week. Yeah.